This week on The Breakdown, Sam Kane opens up in a raw one-on-one -on -one interview after the All Blacks' crushing loss to the Pumas. Canterbury came closer to relegation than a playoff spot, but the mighty 10 Cup semi-finalists have been found. And Tumbai Matson is co-breaker for the heartbreaker from the weekend. Kia ora koutou, katoa, hello and welcome to the breakdown. Yes, the Pumas created history on the weekend, if you didn't know, but in the All Blacks for the very first time. Tonight we will try to give you some answers and what does it all really mean? The breakdown is on the clock. Sir John Kerwin, Mills Muliaina. All right, we've had a couple of days to take it all in, seen so many comments, gentlemen. JK, I'll start with you because you're well and truly dressed for the occasion. Yeah, there are a lot of people around the world <laughs> smiling right now. I'd just like to say, uh, vamos, 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 Katimba Locos, who is a local Argentinian soccer team who thought I liked them last week and then they thought I hated them. So they were very upset. So this is for you people. This is for my Argentinian friends. I said you're going to get pumped by 40. And you didn't. And they were outstanding. They were outstanding. You, can't, you cannot take anything away from the Mills. Defence was outstanding, uh, thoroughly deserved their win, but for me, it just came out of the blue. I just was not expecting it. Absolutely from, from nowhere, considering the, you know, they had played no rugby uh, throughout this, uh, well, since you know, the, the Rugby World Cup, really, and the way they played, and, the, and tactically the way they played and out-muscled the All Blacks, quite phenomenal. How do we put it into context then, JK? The fact back-to-back -back losses for the All Blacks, uh, a performance on the weekend that obviously clearly frustrated with. A lot of fans uh, disappointed with the performance uh, responsibility. In saying that, though, Argentina have been close before. You played in the game where it was a draw. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> he's, he's heavy. He's yeah, heavy. He's heavy about it because it was now. a draw. Uh, the fact that in 2002 they were right there. Scott Robertson scores a try in the last so minute. So I bring up you losing five in a row now, should I? Yeah, that'll come up later in the show. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. Um, it. It's fine because this is what we have to deal with. This we have to look at, into, deeper into. The Pumas, are we giving them enough credit before they even got to this game? The fact that they've been close to beating the All Blacks before. No, we didn't because of context. Now, my problem, it came out of the blue because the All Blacks don't normally lose two in a row. We thought they'd be very we thought we'd see a reaction from the game. It didn't happen. Argentina had had COVID. They haven't played for a long time. All these things that you put into your box of prediction and go, look, they're going to be competitive because they always are, but they're not going to last the game. And that's what surprised me the most. Absolutely unbelievable performance. But out of, out of context, it was a little bit like the Australian, it's been like the whole series, you know, the Australians g draw the first game and then the second game, you think, oh, yeah, and then they come out and win the third and you're going, there doesn't seem to be a lot of context around even the way we're playing. Mm. I looked at some of the comments Steve Hansen made over the last couple of years in terms of challenges they had, and of course they lost to Ireland for the very first time, Mills, and his look at the game, it was the, the fact that defences now were dominating the attack. Is this just another sign of that, given 2019 Rugby World Cup final played between South Africa and England? We for years have encouraged Argentina, South Africa, to play an open brand of rugby, yeah. to develop their game, which they have through Super Rugby. But in the end, did they just go back to their roots, the Pumas, go back to their scrum? Their kicking game, was that good enough? And in the end, defence has won the day. Well, funnily enough, their scrum in the last couple of years has is, is actually hasn't been that great. You know, now they, they have. They've shown signs of going back to their own game. And that's why, when you talk about the context of it, they haven't, they've been out this whole time. We thought, OK, the speed of the game, you know, they'll, they'll absolutely be off their feet. But they controlled the speed of the game. You know, they slowed it right down. They put, put in a massive defensive effort that was built around, you know, just, uh, you know, physicality and keeping that player up. And they made things messy. They got into the All Blacks. You know, they really... We, we talked about them being niggly, but they were, it was built around, you know, their captain. And he was very instrumental in their win. I, I don't agree, Goldie. I, I think my issue is that... I don't think any team to win a test match can be one-dimensional. So I think the All Blacks of the past have, have been a little bit more expansive at times. They've had a bit, bit of kicking game. And I think that on the weekend we were one-dimensional. 
I mean, Sam Whitelock carried the ball 454 million times and he got tackled 454 million times. But it was predictable. You look up and I didn't see Patrick Tupelo carry the ball. Was there space out wide? Yes, there was. Did we get it out there? No. So that's not taking anything away from, from the Argent, Argentinian performance because they outplayed us on the day. Did we react to their line pressure, Mills? No. Did we change our game plan? No. And that's what we're not used to. We're used to the All Blacks having a good kick-pass game, having a short game, playing it wide early. They just were one-dimensional, and but it cost them dearly. It, but a lot of this conversation has been about uh, the intensity that the Pumas brought, the fact that the, their attitude coming into the game, the passion that they played with, no more so than Pablo Mantera when he's talking to the, the uh, referee in a game. And this is... You know, all of a sudden the handbags come out and there's a little bit of off-the-ball play and it gets to a point with the physicality. And But his intensity, and he talked about, was the fact you represent my country. And do we confuse our intensity and our attitude with confrontation? And is that a dangerous place to go? Because we needed to be the better rugby team on the day. And you've listened to him talking here. I want to listen to this because this is outstanding. After the whistle, OK? I, I can't see a guy kicking the face of, of one of my men. Okay. It's not respect. Yeah. I'm playing for my country. I understand no that. Respect. But let us deal with it. We don't yeah. need you as the captain coming okay. in. Let's show some leadership, okay. okay? Okay, you've got the original penalty, but don't let me reverse it, please. That's oh, that's, a, that's a Spanish Sean Fitzpatrick. Smart. I mean, that's just a smart thing a captain should say. So what happened is they always niggle and they always hit you hard at rucks and that sort of stuff, you cannot react to that. They are always on the border because that's how they play, with passion, right? But what we did is we lost our discipline. Um, you know, Cole slapping that guy in the face is just like, you know, that's absolutely losing your cool because they're getting on top of you. That, we normally do that to the opposition. So you've got to take your hat off to the leadership and the pressure, Mills, you know, the pressure, when you're, people are getting off the line at you, it cuts down your time, it does frustrate you, but you've got to, you've got to work out ways to get around it. Yeah. And is the, uh, was that one of the things for you, Mills, that almost like they're the warning signs of the fact that we've gone in and maybe just quickly lost their way, and those are things that are, that are hard to get back? Yeah, absolutely. And when you've got a game plan, when you're, you're actually thinking, OK, we're going to get over, over top of these guys, there's no way they're going to stick with us. You know, there is a little bit of niggle. That is very smart play because the actual player was actually one of his players that started the slapping. And so for him to bring that up, it brought, it, it gave the referee, Angus Gardner, in his, a, a mental statement in his head that the All Blacks are doing. And that's why he did that later on in the game. So, so it, was a, it, was a, it, was a, it was a masterclass for them. Given all of that, then, are there some simple answers to some simple questions, JK, in terms of our preparation? Because it, it appears as though we weren't quite ready for what the challenge may be. Yeah, look, and I think, you know, I'm wearing this jersey because it's about respect. What I said last week was an easy thing to predict because, you, you know, all the things I've mentioned, did the players fall into that? Possibly. Did they think they were just going to go out and play a one-dimensional game and beat them? Possibly. Because of where Argentina had come from, because they'd come off a hard series. But I, you'd like to think not. My biggest concern, my biggest concern to both of you was the lack of our ability to change the game plan during the game. And Tabai is going to join me after we hear from Byrne. And we're going to talk very specifically about the game plan and what changed for this group of players between two games. But Byrne, I'll tell you what, there's been some serious reaction across the globe to this result. There sure has. But there's been some other international news I just want to touch on first before we climb into that. Brent Impey, he's resigned as Sanzar chair. He uh, released a statement this afternoon saying it's time for Sanzar to make some fundamental changes which are best placed to happen under an independent chair. Now, just minutes later, Sanzar pushed out their own release, saying Sanzar has for some time recognised that the chair should move to an independent position to remove any conflict of interests and that best practice governance is followed. Now, it's Independence Day. Clearly, everyone is calling for independence, but Impey's held that role since 2016. So does that mean that we've had a conflicted four years? I nominate Sir John Kerwin. I'm sure he's available. <laughs> you put your hand up. He'd give it oh, a crack. I think, I think we should get an independent Pacific Islander. Why? Well, I just think we should. I think we should, and then it's going to look at the whole of the region, right? There'll be a fair voice in the political arena, and I'll co-chair with him. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll just have a bit of fun. I'm though. pretty sure you're available. <laughs> no. <Nah. laughs>
<laughs> that went well, didn't it? Um, yeah, but it was, it's really the fundamental changes and the independence. But what I'm climbing into there is that is it, has it not been independent for the last four years? That, no. That's my query. No, so, no. Yeah. It hasn't. It can't have been. No. He just said it hasn't. No. What's an independent going to bring us? I don't get it. But also, you've got to remember that Mr Impey is the chair of NZR as well. So he'll stand down in December as Sansa, his Sansa role. Anyway, let's get on to the weekend's match while JK's filling out his CV for that role. <laughs> uh, no amount of replays changes the result, does it? It's always going to be 25-15 at the end of the All Black Argentina rerun. Um, how did the world react, though? As Jeff mentioned, um, you can pretty much take your pick. But after Argentina's historic victory, there are now only two, two top-tier teams who haven't beaten the All Blacks in a test match. Scotland and Italy. Comparisons were made to the team of 1998. Thanks very much. Ouch, Losing carry on. five tests in a row. Ouch. Uh, it was grim reading, though. One of the biggest upsets. Yes, yes, it definitely was. Sydney Morning Herald had headlined that the All Blacks were humiliated in a manner rarely seen. The ABs horribly vulnerable and highly beatable. Hard to find too many positives, really. Naturally, social media lit up. Big time. Not at all surprising from UK scribe Stephen Jones. I believe given their recent miserable record, oh, miserable record, culminating in today's beasting at the hands of the Pumas, that New Zealand spent recuperating time in Tier 2 and are replaced by, in the TRC by the Cook Islands. Only fair, really. He's not back when coming forward, is he? Aussie broadcaster Ben Davis expounded. A royal commission is about to be launched in New Zealand. Not far wrong there, Ben. And former Juno Matt Nippet tweeted, seeing Argentinians cry after winning at rugby makes me sad that in New Zealand it only happens when we lose. Now, I love my stats, so here are a few for you. 15. The fewest points the All Blacks have scored against Argentina. 402, number of days since the Pumas last played a test match before facing the All Blacks. 2011, last time the All Blacks lost back-to-back -back test matches. And number three, how's that for a number? Not so great when it's your world ranking. And last week, you are number two. Mind you, it could be worse, it could be Wales. They're now number nine. So, here's a meme to finish with. You know what you do in an emergency, don't you? <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. Wow. Just oh. reposting what someone else. That's, no, that's not my own work. Anyway, you liked so it, much. No, you I liked thought, it, I thought though. It was funny, funny, ha ha. Um, lots of reaction. You want some more? We've got more. Have a look. Argentina have defeated the All Blacks for the first time in their history. Felicidades or congratulations, Argentina. A boil over felt in Buenos Aires. Argentina can finally say they've beaten the All Blacks and it wasn't even close. Defying a lack of game time and all expectations to defeat a full strength All Black side. A, a full strength All Black side as well. This was not uh, a B team or this was not, there were no experiments in that team. I mean, oh, I must be in a dream, am I? Did that really just happen? A slap in the face for a side that knows it played right into the plans of the opposition. November 14 will live forever in Argentina's sporting history. Lost Plenty of chat of what the All Blacks did wrong on the weekend, of course, what the Pumas did right. Tim by Madsen and I spent the last couple of days in the war room trying to work out and dissect this one and so many things to compare, particularly between the two games that yeah. this group of players, Game 3 and Game 5 for the All Blacks, same group of guys going out there trying to perform and we found some significant difference and in particular around the variations around the yeah, game. absolutely. And I think once you take the mindset away, which the panel have been discussing, what we're looking for from the numbers is the system. What do the numbers tell us about the system? And if you look up here, it's about plays off nine, which is obviously a narrower play, and plays off ten, which means the ball's a little bit wider. And so that's playing to forwards yeah. in pods of players, and, and it's that variation that changes the game. And so yeah. this is the sort of thing we're talking about, is about the options the All Blacks were taking and how critical it is to generating their game. Absolutely. And one of the things from game three to game four, we went from 20 carries off nine to 37 carries off nine. And that's, that's, that is what it is, the, the, the number of uh, carries, but it's, it's more with regard to um, the percentage. So in, in game three, we uh, there, were about more, there was more width in the game, we played a little bit wider, uh, the, the, the Argentinians didn't get to tee off as much off, off the nine. And so you look at those percentages, in Game 3, all of a sudden we're seeing a balance. And like you say, yes. that changes the picture. And when you're changing the picture, that does a lot in terms of what defences can do. So when we talk about this Puma defence, does this make it significantly easier for them to put us under pressure? Absolutely. It got rhythm. And it got rhythm early. 
So um, the width of our attack, our kicking game early, did we pick and go, all that variation we spoke about post-game has come through in the numbers. And I think when they reflect on, you know, the individual performances and, and, and the detail in, in the clips, the numbers reflect exactly that. Need to get, get a little bit more wider, uh, a little bit more balance in what they did. Because it doesn't matter how well you do something, if you do it over and over again, the defence will eventually tee off on it. And that's the variations that we kept saying the All Blacks were missing. If you look at some of the footage you know, from these two games, and if we go and look into it now, and essentially what we're trying to illustrate is exactly where the threats lie. And yeah. The All Blacks here, having a release player out the this back is a really, This is a really important point. So in Game 3 against the Wallabies, that person there is... Uh, is important because he, he not only uh, communicates to the forwards in front of him, he's a distributor, but he interests defenders six, seven, and eight. Same thing, Richard Richie's, Moanga doing the same and he does job a here. Really in good behind. job here. So he's does, animated. Yeah, and does this slow down and change the mindset of the attack? It has the to. Defense? Because the, the defenders wider out have to account for him. The wingers in the, in the, in the wide channels aren't sure if he's going to kick to them. And so that's a really important part of the puzzle. Let's talk about that distributor then. Yeah. Between the two games, what was significant differently? Particularly, there's the numbers. Yeah. So only 15 out of 37. So there's 22 times there where there's no threat, right? Yeah. So 40% of the time we had a release player in, um, against Argentina. Against the Wallabies, 80% of the time we had a release player. So that's a significant difference in your system. OK, and so that'll be something they'll look at. Same thing here, release yep. player out the back. And it's, it's a subtle thing here, so you can, have a, you can have a back standing out here on this occasion, but if he doesn't move, defenders four and five can tee off on our forwards. He's okay, not a so threat there, right? If you're behind the forwards, you've got to be animated, you've got to be calling, and you've got to be a genuine, uh, I suppose, a genuine threat. And, and situations here where we've got someone arriving late, you'll see that the Argentinian forwards not only can get off the line, but they don't have to make a decision further out. And you talk about line speed here, you take away the advantage line, yep. and then it gives the, the point of attack the ability to make that second tackle. Yep. But also, support line's not right, you're forced into errors, and the offload is something that has to be accurate. Yeah, absolutely. And, like, I'm a massive fan of the offload, but it's got to be accurate. And in times like this where we get a little breach, we were then ill-disciplined, uh, maybe a little bit frustrated, and then started to throw loose offloads. So we start talking about other options. One of those is using the blind side. Yes. Game three, the ability to switch play, switch direction. Mm -hmm. It puts defence under pressure once again. 14 times game three, only three in game five. What does that mean for the defence as well? Well, think of the short side play as a bit of a jab. Often it doesn't seem like um, you're getting much traction, but if teams uh, don't defend well, you often get like a free run. Remembering on a short side, we normally have a loose forward and a winger, so you normally have power runners standing down a short side. Game three, we changed direction and went back down the short side 14 times, and that's a key part of the variation. And what that does as well, manipulate the fullback. So you can't see it here, but the fullback has to be close to the sideline, which then opens up your kicking game on the open side and in behind the line. And if they're not scanning defensively, we had a numerical advantage here, but we overload the short side, create an opportunity, and Carl Tunukuafi, of all people, steps off the left and he it scores. It just shows you. If they don't defend it well, you can score easily off a short side. OK, and so that's part of the variation that we needed to add into the mix, along with the kicks, along with uh, a little bit more width. And that was what we had great success with against Australia yes. in Game 3 of the season. A 11 kicks, which put them under pressure, and that comes from variation. Then all of a sudden, there is space and a good chase line to put pressure on. And I think not only were the attacking kicks good in Game 3, but we did them early. So as soon as you start kicking, whether it's be along the ground, over to a sideline, what it does is shapes the defence later on. Wingers are unsure, can I blitz on this? I better not, because they've kicked behind me early on. Um, and in the opening minutes, again, in Game 3, Leonard Brown on a line break, Dane Cole's nearly a try, and then this little beauty from Bowden Barrett. Again, see how close we are to the sideline? So you've got the winger across on the sideline, little kick in the middle of the field. Fullback is deep. All of a sudden, both players are engaged. There were just some details. Yeah. And I think that's really important to look at, is the fact the details that the All Blacks missed on the weekend yeah. and how small they can be. And then we just look through all of those plays and the balance of the attack. And when you find and trying to create space, there's yeah. a significant difference between these two games. And as a coach, is that the sort of thing that the All Black coaches will look at? And when captain and coach are talking mm. about we didn't have variety, we were predictable, is that the sort of thing they're seeing? Well, it's, 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 it's irrefutable there, isn't it? So the, the structural stuff comes through in the numbers. And you can see the balance there on, in Game 3. And in Game 5, we're so heavy on the, on the playoff nine. No blindside attack, no short, 
No short kicks. And as we've always talked about winning the kicking game and playing in the right parts of the field, once again, Argentina yeah. successful at doing that against yeah. the All Blacks. And when you turn a defence around, right, it puts them under fatigue, and fatigue was not a factor in the weekend. No. Well, and we discussed earlier how they control the tempo of the game. So they really never, there was never really a jaded defence in front of us. So we had to bring some variation in. Otherwise, and they did, kept teeing off on us. Well, we've looked at it. We looked at it in depth. Hopefully you've picked up an idea where the All Blacks can maybe get back to. The Pumas, though, they didn't miss their tackles. And you can't rely on international teams to do that if you want to win. The Rugby Pass Fans Voice is brought to you by the All Blacks' new sponsor, Healthspan Elite. Powering the fans' voice. Brought to you by Healthspan Elite, the official sports nutrition partner for the All Blacks. And this actually leads us into this question because I'm fascinated by the, the, the panel's reaction to this. And this was what it was. Are the All Blacks effectively utilising the talent at their disposal out wide? And here it is. This is the reaction. And 71% of the people who voted on this poll said, no, we're not using Caleb Clark, Rico Ioane, or Sibir Reese when he plays effectively. So we think about what we've just talked about, Mills. Uh, we think about the talent we always seem to have, the prodigious talent on the outsides. Are they seeing enough space? Are they getting the opportunities they need? And are they communicating that, you know, that there is space out there and they need to get the ball out there? Yeah, all right, right and dandy, the fact that there are. We're not utilising the, the X factor that we've got outside. And there becomes a balance, you know, when you're saying you're hitting a brick wall constantly, that's the time when you've actually got to come in and actually start talking about those opportunities, where it's at. But the, the inside players actually need uh, clarity around that. It's not just their space here, their space here to give me the ball. It's about, you know, how can we... How can we like, that was like, JK's, when JK. he played, that was the whole theory, just yeah. give me the ball, right? But yeah. that's changed. It's yeah. changed. You know, you've got to come in, they used to call it commentate. You've got to come in and commentate, you know, there's space out there, can we get a kick out there? And everyone collectively has got to be on the same page. You can't be coming in and saying, there's space here, there's space here, because the drivers, they've got enough uh, information coming their way um, is in, in, what, in what they need. So you have to be clear about that communication. Uh, answer me this. I, I agree with, the, with the, um, you know, the question. But the trouble that I've got is game three, or the, you know, the game we won against Australia, there was this big variation. How can it go so badly wrong two weeks later? I don't yeah. get that because we were so one-dimensional. Now, Caleb Clark, he got the ball. Yeah, he got the ball, mm -hmm. you're right? But Seven with no rest. space. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but the, game three, they got the ball wide. They had more space because they would varied up the game. Absolutely. What I continue, because if you look at that game and then you look at the Argentinian game, it was like someone just switched off our tactical nows. Whose fault's that, Tabs? Well, I mean, if you were coaching, it, w what would you be sending down? Is it Mwanga that's got to step up? Is it Barrett that's got to step up? Is it the wingers that got to come in and commentate? I don't know. It's, it's all of the above, isn't it? And that's what you got. You, you need people in the outside challenge feeding in good, um, uh, good instructions, but also you need the structural, the structural integrity in your in your in your attack plan, so you actually can use all your variation. So, because I'll say this to you: the fact that JK and you, you you posed and asked us to look for footage of when we've exposed teams on the outside channel and who has been out there doing that and we saw on some of the footage some little wee nip and tuck with but loose forwards and wingers working together whether it's hooker and wingers working together JK is something that we've we've regularly seen in recent seasons and it just seems it's not as prevalent at the moment well that's what I wanted to know because when you think I think New Zealand has led the game in the last possibly 10 years by innovation and one of those innovations was splitting the teams into right and left and Often on the right-hand side you'd see Coles, and on the left-hand side you'd see, you know, you'd see, um, you know, either Reed or someone else, and they'd be out there attacking. So why are we not seeing that, Tabs? Is it because we're we're not holding on to the ball? Because yeah, you probably well, need five or six trucks to get that organised, do you? Not really. I don't think so. I think what we saw in the weekend, and, and we kind of try to emphasise it with the with the um, with the numbers. If you don't have that release player in behind, you can't get the ball to the edge. And if the Argentinians, as they did, tee off on us, then you narrow up. So the variation has to come in early. Um, no, I'm just, I'll just jump in here, mate, sorry. Yeah. Because the, the most important thing you said to me was the release player in motion, Mills. He's got to be running and doing something. It looked like they were just going through the motions a mm. bit, Mills. I don't know what you saw, but well, if Barrett's not hitting out wide... Well, sometimes some games look like training runs, right? Exactly. And you think to yourself, you're just running through. You go to a training run and it's all perfect, right? The defence hasn't put you under certain amounts of pressure. W were we just 
pure and simply caught out with one how effective the Puma defence was and where they put us under pressure. But also, I think possibly not on the same page. You know, thinking about the next uh, next effort as opposed to what's in front of us now. If you're in motion in mm. that back back play, you're actually making the defender, that third or second defender, have to make a decision. The, the issue now and the problem the All Blacks have got is they've got two weeks before their next game. Now you can pick as many things as you want out of there. They've got to go into camp now and think, mate, what are the most important things we've got to get and, and the learnings that we need from this game and make sure that everyone's on the same page. Otherwise, when they come out the next time they play, they'll be trying to fix, you know, 20,000 things. And at the moment, if I look at that, that's where the coaches come into it. We were beaten in the physicality, and the way we were beaten in the physicality is because we didn't take care of that tackler. The tackler wasn't off there, so we were fighting for the ball too long in the air, and it made everything so messy that we couldn't allow, couldn't get the ball out wide. So that, that ruck speed was, was so slow. And you talk about the collision. Who talked about the collision? Dave Rennie. He talked about that in the Wallabies. He continually mentioned the collision. How you win that, you will go a long way to winning the Test match. There's plenty of reaction over the weekend and over the last couple of days. We touched base with our team in Sydney to see who they caught up with and how everyone reacted across the Tasman. The boys from the Old Blacks, they came to get some bicycles to go around Manly. Really cool guys, really nice people. When they asked me where I was from, and I mentioned I was her, that I'm from Argentinian, they said that basically, oh no, we should go to another place. Ole, 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 ola, ole, ole. What do you think? First time ever. It was history. Oh, it's very good, yeah. It's very good. We went there like, oh, well, we're going to see Argentina play good, but... Yeah, we want to see the old guys, really. Yeah. yeah. I'm so happy. Yeah, they did a great match. And it was something historic. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. We were really nervous in the in the last part. We didn't want it to lose, but it was great. It was crazy. It was crazy. I mean, like, I couldn't believe it. Like, after all these years, well, actually decades, uh, yeah. Five years, one time, and be there, it's amazing. We just want to show our people that if you work hard, that with a lot of determination, you can get things done. So keep on going, and you're going to make it. I'm playing for my country. Hey. Today. That'll be a try to Argentina. We felt it all along, right? We've been through hell, and the boys just kept working. The Pumas from Argentina have beaten the All Blacks for the very first time. If I tell you what it means, I won't be able to talk. Just so proud of them. History is created in Sydney. Remarkable performance from the Pumas. I anticipate they're probably still celebrating. And rightfully so, when you do something for the very, very first time, you deserve to do it and do it in style. But what we shouldn't forget is the journey that this team of players and management have gone through to get to this point and have success against the All Blacks in 2020. I trained more than 100 days in my department. To practice the exercises of Scrum, I asked for help to my viejo. Ya. Practiqué pase in the garage de casa. Yo corrí 21 kilómetros en mi casa. Hicimos reuniones y nos juntamos por Zoom durante seis meses en la cuarentena en Argentina. Solos en nuestras habitaciones durante dos semanas en Australia. Entrenamos defensa en el salón del hotel porque no podíamos salir ni tener contacto con ninguno del equipo. Line speed in the conference room. Line speed in the conference room, JK. I mean, you think about that. You think about that journey. Sometimes, though, we talk about players coming together when you get on tour. It can make you stronger. And for them, this group of players, they showed it on the weekend. The big thing for me will be, do you think they can back it up? Yeah, look, I think there's another, uh, another thing that really appeals to me is, uh, and we saw it in the World Cup final, you know, Erasmus says, this is not about us. This is about South Africa. You know, and, and it felt like they were playing for something bigger. And I think that's always important to remember. The game is always bigger than the individual. And they came together and they played for their country that's been suffering. And, and you know, that's amazing. Getting back to your second bit, can they back it up? Th this will be the test of this side. If they're a, a side that we think they are, um, the Australians, Mills, would have looked at that game and they'll probably be not concerned. running too much down, <laughs> that, concerned, right? down, down that straight channel. 
So I'm really interested to see. Uh, I reckon it's going to be a great game of footy. Well, the, the Wallabies won't be caught off guard. That's for sure. After that one against, you know, uh, against the All Blacks, you know, the week before, they'll know what they're, they're they're totally in for. And so when you look at stuff like that, um, you know, in terms of what they've done, you know, it's amazing. They're passionate people too. Uh, the Argentinians, South Americans, you know, and the way they've sort of come together. You know, and then and then put a performance like that. You know, not only physically but also tactically. Um, you know, you, you, you're training your defence in, indoors and things like that. Outstanding. This could be the start of a special era for this Puma squad and team of players and coaches. Of course, Michael Chica got himself involved. I'm sure he enjoyed that as well, not having success with the Wallabies against the All Blacks. But you talk about the next seven days and the next two weeks for the All Blacks is significant. And for Sap Captain Sam Kane, there are some challenges. And we asked Kirsty Stanway to catch up with Sam and talk to him about what 2020 has been like for him and, of course, going through the COVID challenge as much as anything else. Two weeks ago, I would have said really good. I've um, you know, enjoyed the year. In the last two weeks, I've obviously been a little bit, a little bit more challenging. Um, look, if I compare my year though to a lot of other people's, it sort of helps put things in perspective. That um, you know, I'm still pretty fortunate to be doing what I love, um, representing our country, um, and doing that the best we can. So, yeah, it helps to put things in perspective. We can't underestimate the. We're playing five tests in six weeks. Um, you know, the only time we play so many test matches would be at a World Cup, and we certainly can't underestimate the, the toll it takes on some guys being a, away from home, and we've got a lot of young dads. And look, these aren't excuses; um, they're just the reality, really. And um, we learn to deal with these things. Um, and look, we're, I'm going to say that we're, we're trying really hard to improve, and um, yeah. We're as disappointed as everyone with the last two weeks. It's, uh, you know, the highs are, are high in an all-back team and the, and the lows are low, but um, we've got to keep, keep perspective and, and keep working hard. New Zealanders, they're so quick to jump on any little thing when it comes to the All Blacks. You find yourself avoiding comments on social media. Like, how do you deal with that aspect? Yeah, definitely a little bit. Uh, look, I understand completely why, um, you know, fans are frustrated. Look, we're, we're frustrated and disappointed ourselves, so I, I don't expect them to be any different. Um, I know, like, for us as a team, it, it certainly doesn't help if we're spending our times on, online um, reading sort of hateful, disrespectful comments. So, look, de definitely try to stay away from that. Uh, I, saw, I think last year I put a bit of a, a ban on myself at the Rugby World Cup just to not read any media articles for the whole World Cup and um, sort of sort of from that I'm just not as interested in them as what I once was. It almost became like I wanted to read every article and see, see what everyone had to say and um, since forcing myself not to, it's, it's something that um, as a result it doesn't um, bother me as much as probably it once did when I was younger. Can you pinpoint what it is that's been going wrong with the attack, or, or what have you thought of it? Yeah, look, there's no doubt. Uh, look, for, um, you know, our second and third test against Aussie, our attack was, was brilliant. I think we um, highest winning margin against Australia. Um, but there's no doubt the last two tests, um, our attack has struggled a wee bit. And you can look at your attack as a whole, but it, it, it certainly correlates with defence, because if we're giving away defensive penalties, we don't get the chance, when we turn the ball over, we don't get the chance to attack off that because we've got to go back for a penalty advantage and there's no doubt the last two weeks our discipline hasn't been up to stretch, um, which as a result affects our attack and I think sometimes as a team when we're trying so hard to get our attack back running, um, particularly us as forwards or anyone who carries the ball actually, um, wants to truck it up as hard as they can, make the best carry, um, take the opposition on physically, uh, when sometimes the most obvious option when we pause the video a day after a game and have a look is actually the space was two passes wider, um, but because of almost that, that tunnel vision, that, that willingness to take the ball up, we miss a couple of those opportunities and look, it only has to be a couple of those opportunities that we miss, particularly in the first half, and it can change the whole dynamic of a game. Um, yeah, and that when we review the week, weekend's game just been, that was certainly the case. So then how difficult is it yeah. in the game situation to be able to change things and react to things on the fly when things aren't going your way and you may be stuck in, in that tunnel vision, as you say? 
Uh, yeah, look, that's the challenge for us as a team and me as a leader and, and the rest of the um, sort of the drivers, our first fives teams that drive us around the park as well. We've um, one got to recognise uh, what the solution is um, and then we can get that message across so that we can hopefully execute it. Yeah. But it, look, it's, uh, it's certainly easy when you, you stop and pause the video. Um, yeah, but that, that's the challenge to get better in those areas. People that question your leadership and things like that, how do you just ignore that and get on with it? No, I think we've got amazing fans, but we've also got some pretty brutal ones. And I think with that, you've just got to remind yourself that, hey, uh, they may like to think they know a lot about the game of rugby, but in, in reality, they, they don't really. And um, they don't, they may know the game from what they see in the 80 minutes, but they don't see a lot of the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. And to me, um, if I was having, if I'm having my leadership question in the public, the people's opinions who really matter to me are my teammates and the coaches who I work with every single day. And um, you know, I've got a lot of confidence from them that um, we're on the right track. How's Fozzie doing? Yeah, um, look, this again, Fozzie's only human, so, um, and we understand being in this role, um, it comes a lot of pressure and a lot of um, public scrutiny, so, it's not like it's a shock, um, but everyone's human, and I think I've personally been really impressed with Foz, um, the way he's stood up. Um, he's, you know, he's given us really clear focuses of what we need to get better. It doesn't feel like we're bogged down and we don't have the answers. Um, and I think a week's a long time in sport. Um, you know, it was only two weeks ago. Yeah, everyone was singing, singing praises. So. Um, it's a shame we've, we're not actually playing this weekend. It, it's, been, it's been a big five, six weeks, to be fair, playing five test matches in that time. But after coming off the, the game that we've had, our, our nature is we want to get back out there and put it right. So this week we've got to um, sort of get off that treadmill because we've been working pretty hard, um, refreshed mentally um, and, and physically a wee bit so that we can finish 2020 with a bang. Steve Hansen last year talked about the fact that he thought the group hadn't faced enough adversity, that group at last year's Rugby World Cup. Uh, 2007, Richie McCaw faced his adversity as the captain, JK. So for Sam Kane, are we hoping that's his adversity now and we're going to see a response not just from him but the team as a whole? Although, no, we lost the championship out in the World Cup last year. That's enough adversity. We've got the Bledisloe Cup locked away, though. Yeah, perfect. And that's important to us. Perfect. I understand that. But, look, I think, I think that, for me... Um, we need to make sure that the players know direction, they know the game plan. We've got a varied game plan going forward. Um, you know, Sam's obviously disappointed. I think he's been outstanding as a captain, but he actually admitted that we can't win five games in a row, right? That's what happens at the World Cup. So if we want to win the World Cup, then we actually need to be away from home and win five games in a row. So they're important lessons. Adversity, I think, you know, Richie McCaw Mills said after 2007 that he thought about retirement. He came back, they did that redhead, blue head, everyone changed. Everyone changed. So if this is a sign that's going to pivot us and make us change and do things differently, bring it on. It'll be the best loss we ever had. If we carry on thinking that our direction's right, I don't know. But I'm hoping they're questioning themselves. Yeah, I'd, I'd much prefer them to lose now than, than during the Rugby World Cup to have to learn from that for four years because I tell you what, it's, it's not a very good time. But I, I agree with you. They, they've got to prioritise where this has come from. You've got to learn from, you know, where they went, you know, two weeks ago when they gave the, the Wallabies an absolute sort of um, hiding, I suppose. Yeah, they did. And not, and not sort of see it as, oh, there's so many things to fix. You know, like my point before, you know, when you're there and you're facing that pressure and scrutiny from, you know, all across the globe, you tend to think like that, that there's things that are not fixable. When you break it right down, this is where they've got to get really tight. When you break it right down, there's only a few major things that you've got to prioritise and try and fix. And this is why this All Black team has been great over the years, because they have to actually fight back from this. But also, they're probably more scrutinised when they win than when they actually lose like this. What I would say as well, I think this is the next generation of All Blacks we're dealing with. The fact that this is a, there's a big transition of players here from what who won a Rugby World Cup in 2015. Well, this wasn't the only national team in action over the weekend. The Black Ferns enjoyed their first hit out together on the weekend at Waitakere Stadium against the New Zealand Barbarian side, and it was a terrific contest. <laughs> But I'm 
in school because that was classy. Thomas become a trademark. Finished off beautifully. This is where Brooker is dangerous. Grace Brooker. Go Brooker took it at the lotto shop. That was excellent. Pinpoint accuracy. She's so hard to put down and deal with. Arguably the best side in the world. They've got nothing to lose and everything to prove. Sensational stuff. Germany, Frankfurt, Germany. The way I came to rugby was me and my older brother, we went to the local rugby club um, in Frankfurt, SC 880 Frankfurt, and went to our first training. That's where I first got into touch with Kiwis because our coaches over there, um, they were all from New Zealand. And yeah, they, they, they gave me a taste of the game and ever since, I loved it. For the five years that I played over in Germany, when I first started, they kept going on about um, how great New Zealand is and how rugby in New Zealand is like football in Germany. And over those um, five years, my love and my passion for the game increased significantly, so I definitely wanted to come here. I came over here as a 15-year-old. I, I left my family and, and left home in Frankfurt and decided to pursue my rugby chances here in Nelson, New Zealand. It was obviously a hard decision and my mum wasn't a great big fan about it, but yes, yeah, so I took a bit, bit of convincing. Anton came to Nelson College, I think it was three or four years ago. We weren't that sure what to expect from a kid out of Germany. I'd seen some video clips and he did really well, but we saw him a big kid running against little German kids. So we weren't really that sure what to expect. So when he first came, it was really on a half year kind of academic type trial. But once he got here, we just um, yeah, saw, saw what we had. And he's picked up Anton Sagnar, the captain of Nelson on the return. What about that run? First 15 rugby being such a big part um, of New Zealand rugby, like I, I had no time to be homesick or, um, or anything like that. Being part of that team, like that made it real easy um, to make friends quickly and that helped me a lot, like ha having all those mates and just experiencing the whole kind of hype around the first 15 rugby in New Zealand was unreal. Anton's he's a fantastic young man, one in a million. His commitment, his drive to get what he wanted to achieve, which again for a German kid must have been uh, a fantastic vision for him to have. Yeah, very well focused, a driven young man. The debut was obviously um, unreal. In that game, it was a huge step up and, and it was kind of like a wake up call for me that, yeah, this is the real deal and this is the first taste um, of professional rugby and I loved every moment of it. I loved the physicality um, and the speed that the game has played at, at that level and yeah, I just enjoyed every minute that I was out there. Anton has got the ability to go all the way. He's definitely got the drive, the commitment, the knowledge, the know-how. Um, I would love to see him in a full black jersey. It's a difficult thing to say, but I really believe anyone can make it, Anton can. Playing for the All Blacks is definitely a goal of mine, but my main focus and has always been just to um, focus on being the best athlete that I can be. A great place to develop his game. Good chance, JK. Crusaders have already well and truly signed him. Oh, they signed him up when he was in Frankfurt, mate. Crusaders. <laughs> hey, no, mate, no good terms. You make an investment hey. in the future. They don't have to do that, no, I'm making no comment. I'm here to talk about Canterbury. What are you talking about Canterbury for? We're talking about the semi-finals this weekend. You're yeah. talking about a team that survived. I think everybody's just happy they didn't make the semi because the way they were rolling... We're not talking the next uh, four or five minutes. We're talking about the teams Sorry. that are in the semi-finals. I'm going to talk about Otago. They're taking on Northland. Oh, I can say strange this. that. You're going to yeah, talk about Otago. We're going to use three and a half minutes per time talking about Otago. No, yeah. what I would say is the fact... No, North Harbour... Um, uh, uh, North, uh, Northland been very, very good this year. I think it's been a great season for them, but Otago have been good, and I'm picking them to come out on top of this one. Can anyone argue against that, but who wants to? Mills? Oh, oh no, I think, mate, I would have to agree with you, eh? That, no, they've been playing some pretty good footy since they lost the Ranfordy Shield. Oh, 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 that was harsh. Oh. I don't care, I'm going to talk about Auckland Waikato. OK, talk Can about I? Auckland and yeah, Waikato then. OK, Can bring I? your best. Auckland win. Done. Well, we you. can't Next. wrap up the show yet. We've got more time to talk. About. <laughs> oh. I mean, a solicitor, yes, he's been outstanding for them. Look, I don't think at the moment you say there's a definitive favourite, though, is that across across both competitions. No, that's right. The fact right. that it's been so even this year. Look, North Harbour have gone down and won five games. Tab, tab. So, you look at Auckland. Have you seen the team that has won a championship in recent times, or? Are they going to have to be very, very good? I think the next two weeks, like the matchup, the, it's a classic Auckland Waikato matchup, is, oh, is, is like the, um, the battle of the vol. So I think whoever gets to the final, again, anyone could win that as well. Waikato is a bit of a sort of a sleeper. 
in yeah. some ways. They have over the last few few weeks, haven't they? I mean, they've been very dominant in terms of your yeah. forward pick, and then they've sort of lost their way a little bit. So when they travel up State Highway 1, you know, it'd be very interesting because they get fired up for the Aucklanders. Mm. It's a good drive now, though. All the motorways are going good. There's no problems getting here, JK. Um, Could put the tolls back in. Uh, tolls back in. We're not still... Oh, that was Harbour Bridge, sorry. No tolls. No, no, no. We're paying for the water from down there, aren't we? Yeah. Isn't that what we're paying for up here in Auckland? <laughs> all right, let's start talking about Hawke's Bay and Taranaki. If you love a line-out drive, it's just all over the Hawke's Bay. Let's be honest. I mean, um, Ash Dixon's had some sort of season. Yeah, this is a team for me, I think, Tabs, is probably one of the best across the country. Been really consistent across their whole season. And, and I always think, which of the teams could go up to a semi-final in the, um, in the premiership and actually win. And you'd think, Hawks Bay on their day, they've got the, well, I'd say a complete game because they've got some firepower, but it's the upfront um, oomph that I think is going to get them over the line. Yeah, I mean, we talk about Ash a lot, but, uh, you know, he's just one of those guys that will bring a team together, lead them, lead them properly. So I always think that they'll be hard to beat because they've got that whole team mm. thing going. That's what I like about them. Playing good footy. Uh, uh, Tasman take on Bay of Plenty. Mm. Um, I was in Tauranga on the weekend and Bay of Plenty came back from 21-0 down against North Harbour Mills. An outstanding place to play rugby. Great crowd, great energy. Great They're place for a super. Oh, great oh, place for the six team, yeah, wouldn't it be? Yeah, great population. Six team go well down there. Let's focus on this, though. We'll talk about that next week. Uh, Tasman, the defending champions. You just can't... Uh, yeah. I don't think you can underestimate Bay of Plenty Mills. No, you can't. Look, especially, I mean, home. The fact is, the Markles have got them at home. And, they, you know, mm -hmm. the Bay of Plenty haven't beaten them in five, five straight occasions. And the last time they played, 33-5. But you've seen how the Argentinians played, mate. There could be hope there for, the, uh, for Bay of Plenty. I think Bay of Plenty would like their chances, uh, Tabs. The way they've been able to get themselves back into games and contests, even when they're behind, behind early. Yeah, they'll be correct. They'll, they'll be um, inspired by last week's win from behind. Uh, but they'll need all of their tricks for 80 minutes to get over Tasman at home. How, how good is them winning you know, the, the championship last year and now being in the premiership you know, semi-finals? Yeah. That is an outstanding effort. Yeah, good effort. JK's got three fingers up. Nothing to lose. Nothing to lose. Yeah. When you, got nothing to lose, when you come from the team. bay, man, you've got it's nothing to lose. Incredibly dangerous. Dangerous. There's been some unbelievable action on the field this year and we have a try of the year competition. Let's check out some of the fantastic action. Momentum here again, the visitors. Collins, Manu in the white channels. Ball in one hand. Nasi Manu gets it away too brilliantly. To Villamonte Kurai. Try scored. And there could be a turnover ball here. Wide pass has gone to Barrett. Put him in a bit of space too. And now Jordy Barrett looks to link up with Booth, who's got pace. Looking to link up further in field. And he pops it up now to go. Basham sends it wide. And Sabir gets his pass away. Garden Basham just had to wait briefly and now the ball across for Lau Marfi. Got on the outside of Barrett. Lau Marfi heading towards the corner. What a try! Got there, Joanna Siatunga. Canterbury shifting it through the hands inside their own half. Looking for space down the left. Away to McGovern. Shovels it to Steinmetz. She's got Bremner on the outside. Back to McGovern. McGovern's still going. She could go all the way. Finds the support and Kotsage. And Kendra Kotsage will score a brilliant try for Canterbury. Fittisar. Offloads. Jack Jones. Jack Jones! Jones! A fun What a try! What an impact he's made from the bench. Baylor fears for Willison. Ellie. Short for Hawhepper and now plenty of space. Carla Hawhepper, who is the support that she's got? Flula looming up on the inside. Stacey oh. Flula ghosting her way, fending her way through. And you'll have too much gas. That is a wonderful breakout try. The Waikato stars combined. Caleb Clark, I don't know whether you want to be kicking to this fellow because he'll hurt you. He'll hurt you big time. Caleb Clark thundering down towards the 22 and still going. Amazing run from the young winger. It's put the All Blacks deep inside Wallaby territory. Pass goes wide to Salvia. He's a, what a brilliant try by the All Blacks. Thank you. 
Jaden Stark with a late ball. Malele now playing out on the right edge with a kick for himself. Regattas, what a return ball on the outside. They have done the work. They've done the mahi, haven't they? Oh, Anderson. Again, Steinmetz offloads. That's the skipper again down the left-hand touchline. Is she going for two in a row? And gets it over, and the arms are raised. We look at all of those previews, look at all of those ac that action, JK, and the sun's out. How That's good what is it? when you play deep into November, right? How good is it? If I think I ever played a game, I'd also want to be on the bench for the Pumas. Because they were dancing as well. Did you see yeah. them? Well, everyone else is serious on the bench. And they're just dancing. They're loving it. But the weather's been great. The, You're right. It's Sorry. been a fantastic competition. Some of the, the, the places that the NPC's gone this year, Mills, you've travelled around a bit, done some games. I mean, I think that's been a real nice addition to this competition. Oh, it's been awesome. You talk about the weather factor. You know, how good is it to have crowds here as well? To actually, you know, be entertained by some good footy, some brilliant tries over the year. So, no, it's been, it's been awesome. Well, I'll tell you what, Tabs, we're going to have a work cut out for, I'm sure, in a couple of weeks. Can't wait to see it. And I'm going to quickly from you, just on the numbers, Australia or Argentina, Ooh. quickly. Ooh. Australia. Australia. <laughs> and, and you just think... No, I'm not simply... being spiteful. I'm not being spiteful, but yeah. I think Wallabies oh. will get up and no. RG's oh, no. drive. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, and we'll finish on that, because that's been the highlight of the show for me. So John Kerwin in a Puma's jersey. Great to have you with us here on a Tuesday Vamos. night. We'll see you in seven days' time. <laughs> <laughs>